<clears throat> okay, so I had to give a glimpse of him. <laughs> so that is, uh, again, Sebastian Graham Price. And today I want to talk about the, uh, the beauty and the benefits of birth and of knowing what you're doing um, when it comes to uh, working with your healthcare professionals um, and uh, basically taking all the information that we are talking about uh, on this blog and gathering enough of a knowledge base to help you um, get through some difficult decisions. <clears throat> and you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about here in a few minutes. Um, first of all, I want to remind everybody of the office hours this week, uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11, and then Thursday I'll be back in from 4.30 to 6. Uh, still going a little crazy right right now, trying to adapt to uh, life with a newborn and two-year-old, and uh, it's crazy. It's wonderful, but it's crazy. Uh, sleep is not very plentiful right now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so, uh, you know, please feel free to walk in during those office hours if you're an established patient. Um, but we had a, an adventure um, getting to the point of having our beautiful baby boy uh, born with us. And if any of you were patients with us about nine months ago, um, you may remember there was a time that, you know, Kelly and I may have seemed a little bit down. And what had happened was... First of all, we were surprised to be pregnant. <laughs> we had decided that we were done. So, you know, the good Lord had other plans for us. So we, um, you know, found out we were pregnant and, you know, got adapted to the idea and got used to the idea. Um, but as we were going through and beginning our OB appointments, um, they found something on the ultrasound. They found what they thought was a mess. And through a very, very horrible six weeks, we went through thinking that Kelly had uterine fibroids, which would lead to, um, you know, possible dangers to the fetus, uh, everything from fibroids to a molar pregnancy in which the pregnancy is totally terminal, um, no chance of survival. Um, just a horrible, horrible up and down six week struggle. Um, and what ended up happening was, you know, we, we stuck with it and we had a, a wonderful OBGYN. Her name is Dr. Uh, Mindy Graham. I recommend anybody go to her. Uh, just an incredible woman. Um, but we worked with her. She worked with us. She actually helped us, um, you know, stick the course, um, even though we were getting very fearful for Kelly's health. And um, it, we ended up going to a high-risk doctor for an evaluation and finding out that absolutely everything was normal. So uh, the point in telling you this part of the story is that um, diagnostic uh, uh, procedures, you know, the technology that we have, while miraculous, can also lead to some misdiagnoses, which can lead to, you know, it almost led us into a terminal situation with the baby um, when there was actually nothing wrong. It was just something that was very, very strange occurrence of events. Um, so you have to know the questions to ask. You have to know the theories. You have to do the research. You have to prepare yourself and make sure that you are asking all the right questions and making sure that you're getting the right answers. And again, we had a wonderful, wonderful OB who, uh, Dr. Graham, she was just incredible, and she stuck with us through this and actually encouraged us to, us to stick with it and to trust, um, you know, almost a little more than we were willing to. It was, it, was, it was an amazing experience. Well, then we went through the pregnancy, everything was normal, and Kelly went in for her normal checkup last Monday. And very, very briefly, they just put the heart rate monitor on the baby, and very briefly, it registered a little bit low. And the nurse said, okay, well, let's, you know, let's check this out and make sure everything's okay. So she put her on a heart rate monitor and everything was totally normal. That one moment, he had a little bit of a low heart rate. Well, they were a little, a little bit suspicious just because, you know, why was it low? It could have even been a misreading, but it made him a little bit suspicious. So we started asking questions and Kelly let him know, you know, some of the answers. And so Dr. Graham, you know, being very, very thorough, decided she wanted to run ultrasound just to make sure in her words that everything was perfect. Sure enough, she ran the ultrasound. Sure enough, it was not perfect. <laughs> Kelly had low amniotic fluid. And the challenge with that is that it can lead to cord compression, um, which is not good for the baby. So immediately, Kelly was, uh, you know, we took her over to the uh, hospital Monday evening, and um, they gave her what's called a prostaglandin, which is used to uh, soften the cervix to help speed up the labor process. It wasn't quite the induction of labor, but it was to uh, speed up the process. And that was enough to put her into labor. And uh, she typically will labor for 18 hours, or I'm sorry, 20 plus hours. Um, but this time she only labored for 11 hours and uh, gave birth to, you know, our beautiful baby boy. And it was just, it was a, an incredible experience. Great people over there. The nursing staff was great. Um, everybody was wonderful. 
But the important thing here is that in the beginning of the pregnancy, the diagnostic procedures and the technologies proved to be wrong and proved to worry us about a totally normal pregnancy. But at the end of the pregnancy, they quite possibly could have saved Sebastian's life um, through one small little glitch in his heart rate. And we ended up going through the procedures and finding exactly what was wrong. So um, I, I know I say this because I know that on this video, I am constantly um, teaching you ways to avoid medication, to keep yourself healthy and strong um, so that you don't have to get into chronic uh, medical necessity situations. Um, but I also will be the first one to get on here, just like I did when Kelly was in the hospital with her asthma attack, and tell you when it works, because I feel like the information needs to be out there. Um, you need to know when to do the right thing, and sometimes the right thing is going with the medical model. Um, you know, of course, ideal situation, you go natural with the pregnancy, let it run its course, let everything happen the way it's supposed to. You know, but you never know what could happen. And the diagnosis procedures that they used, it, it, it you know, everything worked out incredibly. So um, just re, uh, restating the fact that while it is always best to do things natural, do things the way that they're meant to be, um, you know, our medical system and handling of emergencies, it, there's nothing better. There's absolutely nothing better. Uh, and I've got to give a ton of credit to my OB because she was patient, she was calm, she never mentioned a C-section, and I know that this situation is one where uh, many times many doctors would have gone straight to a C-section. In fact, when Sebastian was coming out, um, I could have sworn that I saw her take the cord ar from around his neck, um, which when I look back in hindsight with everything they were doing with Kelly with positioning and you know monitoring her heart rate, so uh, the baby's heart rate so closely, uh, you know, they, they they were um, suspicious of that, but they knew that we did not want a C-section and they did everything in their power and wonderful, wonderful people. So um, anyway, uh, I feel like, you know, you need to know that. You need to know that there are times when you have to go with the medical model. And I'm here for you if you ever have any questions um, and are curious as to whether that's a good option for you, you know, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'll do my best to, to guide you. Um, you know, it, it, our health is a challenge and we, you know, it, the decisions that we make every day affect everybody around us. So, um, we've got a healthy brand new baby boy. Life is great. A little bit exhausting, <laughs> but, um, you know, just, uh, stick with it and let's take control of our health, uh, before our health takes control of us. Everybody have a great day and uh, I'll be back with y'all tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.